Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Florida Man Outdoor coming at you again with a, another tutorial video for the Motorola radios. Uh, this video will apply to most P25 radios as you need a key loader um, for loading your encryption keys to your radios. And the key loader I have is uh, a KFD Shield. There's a key loader that some guys are working on, some open, some other open source stuff that'll be releasing soon. But this video is going to pertain to basically just setting up your KFD shield and loading some keys. Today I'm loading keys to one of my Motorola XTS 5000s. Um, so we're just going to start um, with the hardware. What do you need to get in order to do this on the hardware side of things? Well, um, first off, you're going to need a radio, P25 radio, EF Johnson, Motorola, Kenwood, something of that nature. And you're going to need to get yourself one of these here. Uh, so what I have is a KFD Shield, and I went ahead and bought their uh, their TRS to high rose adapter cable, so I didn't have to build one. And this is from Omaha Comms right here. Um, from their website, you're going to go to their GitHub page, which I already have it open, but if you go to the KFD Shield, just scroll down here, and there's a link to their GitHub page. So we're going to come over here, and, oh, actually, sorry, guys. The next piece of hardware you're going to need to pair with your KFD shield is one of these guys here, an Arduino. Uh, this is what I have is the Uno Rev3. Um, you buy one of these guys and you pay, you uh, you basically stack your shield and your Arduino on top of each other with the header pins, so that way they can communicate amongst each other. the uh, The Arduino kind of handles the data rate transfer between the computer and the shield and then the shield handles the the communication between the computer and the radio and all those kind of parts work together in order to get the keys to load to the radio because the data rate for key loading the p25 radios is a very specific rate so the firmware that you're loading to the arduino and everything helps regulate the data so that way the radio will accept it so after you get yourself your shield you get yourself your uno uh, you get that in the mail, you stack them on top of each other. Um, the next thing you're going to need is some software. For your Arduino, you're going to need to download the uh, the IDE, which is basically just like the firmware updating files uh, or like your sketch files and everything. If you've already messed with some Arduino stuff, I haven't really done any of that other than just using it um, on my KFD shield for loading keys to radios. But you're going to download the IDE for your appropriate operating system here. You can see these are all of the uh, supported options. And now you're going to come over to the Omaha comms GitHub page. You're going to come over here to the releases section. And you're going to get the latest. You're just going to go ahead and uh, download both of these. You don't need the source code, but you're going to want the firmware file. This is what you're going to load to the, uh, the Arduino the uh, ION file, I believe it is. And then you're going to need the software, which is, this is a uh, slightly modded KFD tool software that will uh, recognize the KFD shield because the normal KFD tool software uh, won't recognize a shield for key loading. So they made a little bit of a mod here, so that way it will recognize your shield for loading. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Another piece of hardware you guys are going to need is something like this. You're going to need the uh, November Tango, November 8613 Charlie is the part number. This is the high rose key load adapter for XTS 2500 and XTS 5000 radios. This one's a new condition with a box uh, for 63 bucks. There's a few left. There's some other listings on eBay as well for these radios. So the next thing you're going to do is once you get all of your cables, oh, I almost forgot, you're going to need to, Arduino sells them on their website, but you're going to need a USB-C to USB-A cable, which they sell on their website because the, just get the appropriate cable for plugging in your Arduino from your computer to it. It's a simple USB conversion cable. Um, after you do that, you're going to open up your, uh, you're going to get all your stuff in the mail, obviously. You're going to stack your shield and your Arduino on top of uh, on top of each other. And uh, it's actually pretty cool. We'll go back to the GitHub page here really quick. If you go back to Omaha Comms GitHub page. Oh, no, wrong one. Uh, I hit the wrong button. Excuse me. Couldn't close out of that. 
they have a whole thing here that explains to you how to basically set everything up, but it's kind of confusing if you don't know what exactly you're reading. That's why I'm making this video. So, um, like I said, we're going to come back here to the uh, Arduino IDE, and you're going to have, uh, you're going to go ahead, like I said, plug your board in, and you're going to click File, Open, and you're going to come to wherever you have your firmware file saved to. You're going to open this firmware file in the Arduino IDE. Oh, sorry, wrong file. You're, it's this file with the icon, the INO file. You're going to open this in the IDE. It's going to pop up a new window real quick as if you're doing like a new sketch. My, mine's already flashed. I'm just doing this for you guys. So it's going to open up this sketch. You can click uh, verify to make sure that this sketch will work with your Arduino. You're done. Then you'll click load. It will load the firmware to your Arduino. The lights on the KFD shield, uh, like I said, they're going to be stacked together. The lights on the shield will start flashing. Uh, it'll tell you this stuff, and you're done. Super easy right there. You could save this file if you need to, but uh, you don't really need to. So you can exit out of this, exit out of this. Next, we're going to come into the KFD tool software. We're going to go ahead and open up this software, and it is just an exit. It's a, uh, I always get this error. Uh, something about access denied to COM port 3. doesn't matter. Just press OK. It opens up the software. You're going to come in here to device, and you're going to click on the COM port that your Arduino and Shield are plugged into, which in my case is COM port 9. Um, if you don't know what COM port it is, just select a COM port until this down here uh, auto-populates with the Arduino's and Shield's uh, information. You'll get the serial number, the firmware version, all that kind of good stuff. Next, I'm going to open up my um, one of my key files here. Uh, da, 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 da. What? Hold on, I typed in something wrong. There we go. Um, for you guys, if you're obviously going to be creating a new file, you'll come in here and you'll click uh, container and you'll make a new container. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to run through all that because I can explain how to do it with just a container I already have here. So once I've opened my container, I'm going to click edit and it'll bring me to this window here. And you can see I've got 10 keys um, already loaded. You can click on each key and, you know, it, it blanks it out. I could click unhide or whatever, but um, we're going to come off of this software momentarily. We're just going to minimize this window. And this won't close because you're running in another window of KFD tool. So this is just going to stay open in the background. But we're going to come over to our Astro CPS. And real quick, we're gonna just going to handle the what you need to do on the CPS side of things to make sure that your keys will correctly load to the radio. And that's going to be, first step is secure configuration. You're going to come in here, you're going to make sure secure equipped is checked. And that hardware encryption is checked because we're loading hardware-based encryption keys at this point. We're not doing software-based ADP keys. Um, you're going to come in and you're going to select hardware-based encryption. And I don't think you have to do anything else in here. Um, I do have infinite key retention on. This is a feature you could decide through your SOPs if you want it enabled or not. Uh, the clear alert tone is enabled, so if I press the PTT on a digital channel uh, and the encryption switch is turned off, I will get a tone that will remind me, hey, you're transmitting in the clear. Um, a periodic key fail alert tone just, uh, you can also set it to ignore the secure clear switch if you set your personality, uh, the, the Astro personality for that channel to be strapped permanently and then uh, the, the end user won't be able to toggle the switch for clear or secure. It will just ignore that switch and use the personality's configuration, whether that personality for that channel is clear or encrypted. So after that, you're going to come in here to your secure multi-key list. And this is kind of where the KFD tool software and your CPS files have to work together. You can see here that there's a CKR number and then a key name. 
The key name is what is displayed on the radio when you select the key uh, to be used. Real quick, actually, we're going to run in here to display and menu. I like having the key function. Oops, keep scrolling too far. The key function on my uh, on my menu items, so that way I can change what the end user or I can change the key that is being used at that time on that channel or whatever. And it doesn't matter if two radios or a group of radios, they could all be using different keys as long as all of the radios have the same key file loaded. The receiving radio will automatically very quickly determine what encryption key is being, uh, is being received. We'll switch to that key and use it. And then when you press your PTT, it'll actually use the PTT that you, the, or the key that you have set. So radio A could be running key one. Radio B could be running key seven. Radio three could be running, uh, you know, key two, three, eight, ten, whatever. The, uh, the UCMs, I believe, will hold like almost 200 AES keys, if I recall correctly. It's like 180-something keys um, is the maximum storage capacity on the Motorola UCMs. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I know it's a lot. It's way more than 10. I've heard some people out there say you can only have eight keys loaded at a time. That's a lie. I have 10 currently loaded on my radios, and I could do many more than that. So we're going to go back to our secure multi-key list here. And like I was saying, so the software, your CPS file and your KFD tool software have to kind of mesh together in the sense that these CKR numbers have to be ascending for however many keys you have. You can't just have a CKR number of one over and over again. You'll only be able to load the CKR one from this file. It'll load that same key like 10 times or however many keys that you have, you know, however many of these values you have filled. But if this value here is just CKR1 the whole time, it's only going to load one encryption key. So you can see here I have CKR1 through 10 and my KFD tool file, my CKRs right here, ascend 1 through 10. I also make the key ID. I don't think this is necessary, but I make the key ID the same as the CKR number because this isn't what the radio is displaying when you select a key, it's what you key in here in CPS. So once you've got all that worked out, you've got however many keys you want, you're gonna add here, you know, I could just keep adding keys and I would have to, you know, so now I've got 24 uh, spaces for keys now, I'd have to go and add the, you know, one through 24 here and I would have to create a key file container, I'd have to add you know, another 14 keys to this file in order to fill all those spots, all with ascending, you know, chronological uh, CKR numbers. Anyway, once you get your key made, you can come over here to groups and you can click new and you can, I just have this AES group one and you're going to click all of your keys here. So for I'll remove key one. So for instance, you're going to have one through 10 here. You're going to create this group. You don't have to do this, but it's the, it's the right way to do it. I don't think it'll let me move that. Oh, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to save this. So once you do that, I'm going to exit out of this. Go ahead. And uh, like I said, your shield should already be plugged in. I'm going to real quick, just uh, I'm going to plug in the, the TRS cable to my shield. Oops. About knocked my radio right off the desk. And I'm going to plug the... Pyro's connector into my key load adapter that is connected to the radio. I'm going to turn the radio on. And as soon as you plug it in, the radio should enter key loading mode. Um, there's a, also a way to double check this. Actually, real quick, guys. I'm being retarded real quick. Um, you're going to come over here to utility, and you're going to go to adapter self-test. And you can go ahead and do this to make sure that the computer is communicating with the shield Make sure the radio is unplugged. I know I just told you to plug your radio in. Make sure the radio is unplugged. Run a self-test. Radio must be disconnected. Continue. Press yes. Self-test pass. That means that the computer is communicating successfully with the shield. Now, say on this same page in KFD tool. Picking up some noise on the channel I'm on. That's kind of funny. Go ahead and plug your... Uh, radio in uh, to the shield 
to, you know, to the keyload adapter. And now you're going to do a detect MR. This is detecting the memory or the UCM's memory in the radio. You click run. Detected P25 MR. Perfect. Now you're going to go to uh, P25 KFD. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to go to multiple keyload. From this point, you can load one key at a time here. You can just add all of these keys over here and you know, add all 10 and then you can click load and you'll load all 10 keys, but you actually don't have to do that. I'm gonna remove these uh, really quick. And like I said, you're, you made a group. Well, this makes it super easy. All those keys are inside this group. You're gonna add this group over here. You're gonna click load. I think you guys could hear that. The radio made an alarm sound and the lights on the KFD shield flashed a few times and you got this message here, keys loaded successfully. You're just gonna press okay and you're done here guys. Um, that's key loading with a KFD shield. It's super easy, uh, relatively super easy. Once you kind of get it down, it was a little hard to learn with, uh, with a little bit of resources that uh, are available online. That's why I'm making these videos because resources for these radios do seem to be relatively hard to come by. Um, you know, I didn't touch on it, but obviously you're going to need a radio with a UCM and you're going to have to have multi-key H896, um, it's Hotel 8, or Hotel 869, sorry, multi-key enabled. Um, I do not enable the OTAR on my radios, the over-the-air uh, provisioning or programming and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't even enable any of that through my uh, feature sets or my flash codes. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for coming. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, hit me up on Instagram, Florida Man Outdoor. I'd be happy to help you, you know, get your keys loaded to your radio. I'll probably send you a link to this video, but if you have any other questions, feel free to hit me up. All right, later.